welcome back to Voyage of a Time Wanderer. Today I am here to share my Lent TBR. So recently I had seen a few other booktubers, uh, Christy from Dostoevsky in Space and Emma from A Bookish Princess, uh, share their Lent TBRs and I thought it would be really fun to also share what I'm planning to read this Lent. I have some fiction and some nonfiction picks on my list this year and for the past maybe five years or so I have really enjoyed making a, a dedicated TBR for Lent and picking out both some uh, fiction books that have either a faith focus or some sort of deeper uh, theological meaning in their storylines as well as more dedicated theological nonfiction and faith-related nonfiction uh, to read during Lent to kind of augment uh, my other Lenten activities. So I thought it would be uh, an interesting video to share those books with all of you. So I will start with my fiction picks. I have five fiction books that I'm hoping to get to this Lent, three of which are more serious, and then two that I've added in uh, that still are faith-based but are kind of going to be my lighter reads uh, during Lent. So the first book that I'm going to talk about is Illuminations by Mary Sherratt. This is a book that I recently talked about in my Five Star Historical Fiction Predictions TBR for 2023, so I won't go into too much detail here. But this is a fictionalized account of the life of Hildegard of Bingen, uh, a woman who was living in medieval Germany in I think like the 11 or 1200s and she was uh, a nun, an abbess, a mystic, an author, a musician, an herbalist, and wrote lots about her different experiences in these different fields. She wrote music, there is kind of a book of herbal remedies attributed to her as well as some theological writings. So I think it will be really interesting to kind of ease my way into her writings by reading first this uh, fictionalized account of her life and then maybe, who knows, in the future I will be brave enough to pick up some of her actual writings. Uh, and if you want more about uh, the plot of this book and why I'm picking it up, you can go and watch my Five Star Historical Fiction Predictions. So obviously I do have high expectations for this book since it was one of my five star predictions. Um, so hopefully it's a really, really good read. Then the next fictional book on my Lent TBR is In This House of Breed by Rumor Godden. And this is a book that I have heard so, so many good things about. Um, I think I first heard about it on the Fountains of Carrots podcast. And then since then I've seen uh, lots of good reviews all over the internet and particularly my bookstagram friend Elizabeth Brink read it during Advent this year and I'm pretty sure she gave it five stars and said it was a really really impactful read so I think it's finally time that I do pick this book up for myself. Rumor Godden is kind of interesting to me as an author because I really loved her books as a child. She wrote uh, the Japanese Dolls book series. I think, maybe, I don't know if it's a series or if it's just two, but she wrote these uh, children's books from the perspective of Japanese dolls, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And I think she also wrote The Holly and the Ivy, which is kind of a longer form picture book um, set around Christmas time, which again has to do with a doll. So I've only ever read her children's writing and I'm really curious to see what I think about her adult fiction. So this book centers around uh, a community of Benedictine nuns who are living in the United Kingdom in the 1960s and I believe the main character we're following is called Philippa but I think it really is um, kind of more broadly about the entire community of nuns rather than just one character and I think we're following along with the experiences of communal life as well as specifically how uh, these sisters are dealing with the implementation of changes as a result of the Second Vatican Council. Then the next book is Father Elijah by Michael O'Brien. This is a book and an author that seems to keep cropping up everywhere for me recently, so I'm taking it as a sign that this is the time that I should uh, pick this book up. This is something of an apocalyptic, dystopian, quasi-sci-fi uh, title I think, so it's kind of continuing on my Catholic sci-fi uh, reading spree that I started with A Canticle for Leibowitz last year and I've continued on with Our Lady of the Articletes. Uh, so this is kind of going to be the third Catholic sci-fi book or dystopian kind of book. I don't know, 
I was so new to sci-fi that I don't really know what the difference is between like dystopian, apocalyptic sci-fi. In my mind it's all in one bucket and this book falls in that bucket. This is the story of Father Elijah who is a Holocaust survivor and a convert to Catholicism who becomes a Carmelite priest and is sent on a secret mission to investigate a possible antichrist. I've heard there are a lot of deep theological uh, debates and discussions within the plot of this story uh, so I'm looking forward to picking this book up and it is part of a wider series by this author that I think has seven or eight books so if I enjoy this book I will have lots more to read uh, along the same vein. And then we have my two uh, lighter fiction picks. The first of those is The Centurion's Wife by Davis Bunn and Jeanette Oak and this is the first book in a trilogy we are following our protagonist Leah who is a young Jewish woman working as a maid for Pilate's wife and it's set in the time period immediately after the resurrection when all the Roman officials are in a hubbub trying to figure out what exactly has happened and Leah is tasked by Pilate's wife to conduct her own private investigation into the events of the crucifixion and the resurrection. I think there's also a romance at the center of this book and Jeanette Oak is kind of no one for writing like sweet historical romances so I think this will be a really fun break from the heavier books on this TBR and like I said this is the first book in a trilogy and I'm assuming since it's a lighter historical romance kind of book it won't take me very long to read so I might even have time to pick up one or both of the other books in the trilogy as well this Lent if I end up enjoying this first one. And then lastly we have my Lent X middle grade March crossover and that is The Pursuit of the Pilfered Cheese by Haley Stewart. I thought it would be really fun to pick this book up during middle grade March and I've been wanting to read it ever since I first saw the author talking about it on her Instagram while she was still writing it because the concept just sounds so charming and it kind of reminds me of Redwall books or The Borrowers or The Littles. And so this book follows uh, a community of nuns who are living and running a school in the floorboards of G.K. Chesterton's house. And it's got so, so many uh, beautiful illustrations. I've used the peek inside feature on Amazon a couple times to look at the uh, sweet little cross section uh, of the living area that these mice have taken over. And I just think it sounds like such a fun concept for a children's book. This is the first book in the series and these mouse nuns and their mouse students have to work together to solve the case of the missing cheese. So it's definitely going to be a, a light-hearted and quick read. And then we're into the non-fiction part of my Lent TBR and I have four uh, non-fiction books that I've chosen. The first is The Catechism of the Catholic Church and this is a long-term reading project so I'm following along with the Catechism in a Year podcast by Father Mike Smitch this year uh, so we started on January 1st and we'll be reading this book all the way up until uh, December 31st so I obviously I'm not going to be finishing it during Lent but it's still kind of the backbone of my theological nonfiction reading for this entire year. Um, where are we up to? We're up to here so far and as you can tell by like my highlighting and underlining, I've been really enjoying reading through this in small pieces and also having the podcast to explain uh, some of the more difficult to understand concepts. So this is going to be my main reading focus. Uh, this is like my daily non-negotiable. And then I have three more non-fiction books that I'm hoping to also get through over the 40 days. So then my next nonfiction pick is one that you might have heard me talk about before. I believe I've mentioned it on a few other videos and it's one that I've been reading for a while and that is A Call to Deeper Love, The Letters of Zelie Martin. And this is a collection of all of the personal correspondence of St. Zelie Martin. Uh, she is the mother of St. Therese of Lisieux who is a very famous uh, late 19th century, early 20th century saint and Zelie and her husband Louis were also canonized together so they are also saints. Uh, they were living in France right at the end of the 19th century. And I'm about a quarter of the way through this book already. I've kind of just been reading it very slowly and casually but I would really love to finally actually finish it up because uh, I have a few other books, uh, specifically The Diary of Elizabeth Lesseur who is another like late 19th century French saint and I don't want to have both going at the same time because I think I'm going to kind of mix up what's going on in whose life. So I would like to wrap up 
um, Zoe Martin's letters before I start the diary of Elizabeth Wasseur. I have really loved what I've read of these letters so far. It's been a really sweet glimpse into their life at home and the challenges that this couple passed through as husband and wife and as parents. And so it's definitely a collection of letters that I've really enjoyed reading and so I'm planning to look at how much I have left and kind of break it into how many letters I need to read per day to have it finished by the end of Lent. And then my next book is Letter and Spirit from Written Text to the Living Word in the Liturgy by Scott Hahn. It wouldn't really be like a Lent or Advent TBR for me if it didn't have a Scott Hahn book. I absolutely love his writing and have read many many of his books now but this is one of the ones that I haven't read and apparently it's somewhat of a continuation of his book Lamb of God which I read a couple of years back now during Lent maybe in 20, 2019 maybe or 2018. Uh, so I'm looking forward to picking up Letter and Spirit this year. This book is all about the linkages between the Bible and the Mass and Scripture and the Liturgy and so I think it's going to be, uh, as all of Scott Hahn's books are, insightful and eye-opening and have me looking at practices and passages that I take for granted maybe or I'm quite familiar with and see them in a whole new way. And then the last book on my Lent TBR is A People's Tragedy, Studies and Reformation by Iman Duffy. And this is more of a traditional non-fiction book. It's not really like theological non-fiction. It's just non-fiction that happens to be about a religious topic. I think the author, yeah, he was a professor of the history of Christianity in the UK. And so this book is a collection of his essays about England during the time of the Reformation, kind of from a, a critical lens. So the flap says that the first part of this collection of essays examines two of the most important institutions that were uh, abolished as a result of the Reformation. So that is pilgrimages to the cathedral shrines, as well as the destructions of monasteries under Henry VIII. And so those essays are really focusing on how the practices and institutions through which ordinary people lived and experienced their religion changed during the Reformation. And then in the second half of the book, the essays in that half are looking more at the changing ways in which the Reformation has been thought and written about and the concluding essay is why I actually bought this book because it considers the changing ways in which attitudes to the Reformation have been reflected in fiction, particularly in Hilary Mantel's Wolf Hall trilogy. So I read the first two books in the Wolf Hall trilogy, Wolf Hall and Bring Up the Bodies in 2022. And I'm really hoping that this spring I will finally get to the last one, The Mirror and the Light. After the first two, I just needed a little bit of a break because they are long and literary books. And so I didn't have it in me to read all three back to back, but I'm hoping to get to The Mirror and the Light in March or April this year so that I can then read A People's Tragedy and fully understand what he is expressing in his final essay, which is titled Writing the Reformation, Fiction and Faction. And apparently it's a really interesting, uh, somewhat critical take on Hilary Mantel's books. So I think that will be fascinating because I really enjoyed those books, but I can definitely uh, see where scholars might uh, kind of object to her humanizing mission for Thomas Cromwell. <laughs> So I think that'll be uh, a really interesting uh, companion to have after I finish the Wolf Hall trilogy. So those are the nine books on my Lent TBR this year. If you have specific reading plans for your Lent, I would love to hear what titles you're planning to pick up. And until next time, enjoy wandering through the pages of a good book.